It's the Jamie Wilson Show. And here's your host, Jamie Wilson. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Jamie Wilson Show. I'm Jamie Wilson. This is my show. Today, we have a very special guest on the show. You know her as an artist, a comedian, and TCNJ's greatest portobello mushroom enthusiast. Please welcome Caitlin Canelli. Hello, Jamie. I'm so happy to be here. Thank you so much for being on the show. You're welcome. So, Caitlin, word on the street is that you're a pretty funny gal. And I want to know, how the heck did you get started in comedy? <laughs> well, um, first I was just like, you know, hanging out at some open mics, you know, watching people do the art. And, you know, you just decide to do it one day and then it's done. And so I did that. So that's what happened. Yeah, it's really not that hard to just get up and do it. So give me more of a picture. What kind of places are you performing at? How'd you start? Um, I started in a very small co-op that hosts like a mixed mic. So it's like music and comedy and you, everyone gets like five minutes. Um, there's a lot of hippies, a lot of old crazy people. Um, I felt very at home there. It's a good place to start. So do you see yourself in... 60 years becoming one of these hippies that just goes to these comedy clubs and probably has... i mean as the lifespan of a human gets longer there's going to be more old people and open mics talking about veganism i guess very very true so recently i know you've performed as a member of the newly recognized organized tcnj stand-up comedy society so let's take a look at that an interest in doing stand-up. I think my favorite part of performing stand-up will definitely yeah, go back there. One dollar is going to do over a thousand dollars for the process. <laughs> so, um, but the worst thing that happens is when I go to restaurants and I get handed a wine list and I kind of have to like go back to them and be like, no thank you, you can have this. Can I have the menu that has the meals named after circus animals and some friends, please? Thank you. <laughs> So what was it like performing in front of your peers like that? It was really fun. I mean, my friends had never seen me do stand-up before. Usually I just like go to places by myself because I was nervous for them to see me. Um, it's a lot easier to perform in front of strangers than your friends, like when it actually ha happens. Um, but yeah, they were all there and it was really fun. And I'm glad that TCNJ is like making an opportunity for, for students to try it out because it's a very scary thing to start. Right, so do you think that um, maybe you've inspired some of your friends um, t that go here to maybe try it themselves? I hope not. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. But yeah, <laughs> no, it's very normal for like for you to bring a person to see you do stand-up for the first time. Everyone thinks like, oh, I could do that. And like, yeah, you should try it. But like, it's still, you know, it's hard. It's hard. Yeah. So I, I assume the process is pretty long for you to come up with um, jokes and then perform them mm -hmm. to really work them rehearse them yeah. so like how many drafts do you go through of um, like a normal comedy set um, from start to finish I mean I don't think you ever stop fixing a joke I mean you shouldn't ever stop fixing a joke as you perform it like you know you want to mold it to whatever you find that makes people laugh the most especially you know adjusting different jokes to different crowds you might have a different ending for a joke depending on where you're doing it um, you might use a different tag if you're with a crowd that's like liking it, but if you're with a crowd that's not liking it, you might stop it early. Like you should never stop adjusting to, to the way people are, are, are laughing. Right, right. And even you see um, big stand-up comedians, famous stand-up comedians do different sets differently from mm -hmm. one day to another, one year to another, because yeah. um, they're always just working it. So yeah. it's tough. Yeah, I mean, that's how you stop getting better is you just accept that this is your joke now and you're just going to do that joke. Like you should constantly, constantly be fixing it. Mm -hmm. Right always working advancing it you know awesome so because you're continuing working on all of these um sets performing at all these different places where do you see yourself um in the next year what are you doing in um the world of stand-up well hopefully i would um not stop doing stand-up but like kind of push it to the side and uh, write jokes for tv that's like the dream you know that's how a lot of people get started stand-up comedians wow yeah Okay, so are you thinking about maybe completing like some internships with different teams? Yeah, companies? I was looking at an internship for next year with IFC, which produces um, Portlandia, which is my favorite show. Love it. And they're Love looking it. for a comedy intern, so hopefully, you know, your girl gets that. Love it. I, ho I, c I really hope that you do. <laughs> Thank you. So here's my thing. 
in five, ten years, mm -hmm. you achieve the ultimate dream. What does that even look like for you? Are you writing for someone else's show? Are you creating your own show? What is the show about? Um, I would love to start out working for other people's shows. Like for Broad City is a show that I'd really like to write for. Um, we had one of the writers from Broad City uh, perform earlier this year at TCNJ. Um, I forget what his name was, but he was really <laughs> good. And I love Broad City, so that'd be cool. And then eventually I'd like to have my own show. Possibly like a Netflix original, like something where I can have like a, a lot of creative control, maybe like an independent network, you know, but big fan of CISO. Love it. It's like online TV. It's real good. Cool. So yeah, I'd love to do that. Produce my own like series. Now, are you a fan? Do you watch a lot of Netflix original series? Oh yeah. And what's your favorite one? Um, well, it's not Netflix. It's on CISO. It's called My Brother, My Brother and Me. And that's three brothers. They just have like a little talk show where they sit and then they cut to like sketches and stuff. Cool. It's really good. They also have a podcast. I see you it's doing all these really cool things yeah. in the future. I like I a lot of it. different platforms, you know? Yeah. Awesome. So, Caitlin, I'm going to ask you a question that I ask every single guest on this show. I bet you And do. it's a really difficult question, so get ready. Mm -hmm. The question is, if you could be any kitchen appliance, what kitchen appliance would you be? Which one best describes you? You're walking in to Sur La Tabla. Which kitchen appliance are you? Oh, my God. I would say, um, like, a pasta maker. Really? Yeah, like the crank one. Tell us why. Um, I just like the sound it makes. Does I like the, the process. Yeah. You know, what's interesting is my kitchen appliance is also a pasta maker. Oh that's God. the thing that I think best yeah. describes that's me. That's why we're both so wearing hats. This, this is just crazy yeah. right now. I've never met Kindred someone spirits. who said a pasta maker before. This is You're hanging out with the wrong type of folk. I don't know. This is crazy. Okay. Listen, guys, that's all the time we have for today. Thank you so much, Caitlin Canelli, for being on the show. Thank you. This has been the Jamie Wilson Show. I'm Jamie Wilson. This is my show. Thank you so much. Have a good night.